I think we're most likely we'll probably see the ANC governing in a as a minority government, but only a very slight minority, as I say, just be a couple of percentage points under fifty percent. Are coalitions a viable alternative to the current dominance of the ANC? I posed this question to Marius Ruert of the Institute of Race Relations in a recent episode of my podcast. What follows is a short extract from our longer conversation. You can watch the full length episode by clicking on the link in the description below. Enjoy. So Marius, what's worse, a, a kleptocratic uh, extractive ANC government or a government of uh, volatile coalitions that collapse every eight months or so? Uh, I mean, either way, it doesn't look like there'll be much prioritization of services and much needed investment in infrastructure and, and governance systems. Yeah, well, maybe I think maybe <laughs> unstable coalitions are maybe better than having one kind of hegemonic party you can pretty much do what it wants. Because look, even though the uh, that the NC is back in Joburg, uh, you know they they only they didn't even get a third of the vote in Joburg in twenty twenty one. So they are a very small party. You know, nearly seventy percent of people in Joburg who actually went and voted voted for party that wasn't the ANC. It was still the single biggest party, but it was it's only a it's a party that can't even get a third of the vote in Joburg anymore, and that's. Kind of been replicated across uh, the Gauteng metros. It also only got about 30 odd percent in Ekurileni and uh, Chwane. So it's certainly not the juggernaut it used to be. And I think the ANC also needs to know it's been put on notice. And this is the kind of thing that's going to be happening across the country soon. And uh, I think uh, if we want to see kind of a glimpse of South Africa's future, I think the makeup of the uh, Joburg Council is uh, probably, or Joburg City Council is probably quite a good insight. Uh, where we have uh, the ANC at around about you know, a third of the vote, the DA 25, 26, 27, somewhere around there. Action is a 16%, I think, EFF at 10 or 12%. Then we have these parties as our former senior colleague, Franz Cornier, like to call them, the rats and mouse parties. You know, kind of all these parties, one, two percent of the vote, even less than one percent of the vote. I think that's what South Africa's parliament is probably going to look like around about 2029, where there'll, there won't be any, there certainly won't be any party with more than 50 percent of the votes, and only a handful of parties with more than 20 or 30 percent of the votes. And this is actually, that's the kind of the status quo in most proportional representation systems around the world where the biggest party often is a party that only has 20% of the vote. So that's what South Africa's parliament's going to look like soon. And so if you think it's a you know, rough ride, if you live in one of the Gauteng metros, especially Joburg and Karolini, you wait till the South Africa kind of uh, has a, uh, until parliament looks like what Joburg's uh, council looks like. Look, I mean, the optimist in me thinks, well, if you just zoom out a bit, uh, this is part of the process of change and political realignment. And it's not uh, a switch that you just very neatly flick. Uh, it's necessarily going to be quite volatile and disruptive. This, it's a, a feature, not a bug, uh, of the political changes that are essentially very much needed in South Africa. Um, let, let's go a bit more closely into some post-2024 scenarios. Uh, where do you think the ANC is sitting at the moment? Because uh, we've had a few polls, ANC hovering around 50%. Franz Crenier's uh, polling showed that, but then you know, some other polls showed low 40s, even there was one from the Bielt, I think, uh, which was 38%, which I was a bit skeptical of. Um, and how might the ANC react under various scenarios? And similarly, how might the opposition parties react? Uh, because I'd imagine if ANC got just below 50%, like 48%, for example, might be able to persuade somebody like Patricia DeLille or the ATM movement, if they get any seats in parliament to, to come join them. Um, so that wouldn't that would be coalition politics, but uh, fairly nominal uh, kinds of coalition arrangements. But if they get closer to forty five percent or forty percent, then we potentially see the EFF coming in as a likely coalition partner that would send South Africa in a much more radical policy uh, direction. Um, and you know, do the coalition parties, the the non ANC aligned coalition parties, do they have enough numbers even uh, for us to contemplate a, a broad coalition-based government. Well, look, I just want to agree with you that I do think this is part of the process of uh, South Africa kind of going through another transition. We obviously had the uh, early 1990s transition to majority rule now and so on. And I think we're kind of living through another transition now, which is moving from a dominant party system to a more multi-party system. And I think, yeah, it's, I think overall it's going to be better for South Africa. We're not going to have this kind of a hegemonic juggernauts uh, governing South Africa and we're going to be much more give and take. And I think this kind of chaos we're seeing is just part of these growing pains. So I think, I mean, overall, I'm actually pretty optimistic about uh, how things are looking at the moment, it's obviously depending how you know strong the FF is in any potential future governments. But yeah, I, I think probably as it stands now, 
I would imagine that the ANC, if you know, my, my kind of uh, back of match box calculation, I guess, is I reckon the ANC is probably going to get around between 48 and 52% of the votes. For it to go under 50% of the votes, is going to have to go from nearly 58%, which we got in 2019, to obviously below 50%, which would have be the biggest single drop that ANC has ever experienced in a national election. So I'm quite skeptical of that happening, but obviously things can change very quickly. Uh, we've seen how the ANC's support has dropped in place like Joe, Joe Berg and Chwane. In Joe Berg, for example, in the 2011 municipal election, ANC was getting 60%. In a last local government election, as I was saying earlier, it barely got a third. So there was, you know, a 30 percentage points that it lost, almost 30 percentage points it lost in just two election cycles. So the ANC can lose support very quickly, but I just don't see it happening uh, quite yet. Uh, the ANC is still actually very strong, or well, not very strong, but quite still quite strong in rural South Africa. It's uh, in the cities where it's really been, uh, you know, hemorrhaging votes and so on. But I think uh, my, uh, for me, the most likely outcome is the ANC either just above 50 percent or just below it. And then wouldn't even need somebody like the EFF to stay in power. I think your assessment is correct. So it'll probably go to somebody like good or Patricia DeLille or Al Jamaa or, you know, if the National Freedom Party, I mean, they're probably not going to make it to the next parliament, but if they did, you know, kind of these small parties with one or two seats. No, don't even, even don't count out something like the Freedom Front Plus, to be honest. You know, they Peter Mulder was a, a cabinet or a deputy cabinet minister in uh, one of Jacob Zuma's governments. So, you know, like all kinds, of, as the old saying goes, uh, politics makes for strange bedfellows. But I think where, uh, like what we'll, where we should watch and we'll also be uh, giving insights to what's going to happen in South Africa in the future is places like Gauteng and KwaZulu Natal. In both those provinces, the ANC is probably going to be significantly below 50%. Uh, to the Social Research Foundation, they had some polling that showed the ANC had only 30% in Gauteng, actually below the DA, I think, if it was correct. But another thing we must remember with the ANC, uh, one of the things it still does pretty well, I'm not sure if it does anymore because I think the ANC, just like the government, has lost lots of capacity in the past couple of years, is it's a, the ANC is very good at campaigning and it's very good at getting that last squeeze just before uh, an election, of getting its uh, voters to actually go to the uh, poll, uh, polling booths and go cast their votes. That, that's why the opposition does, generally speaking, better in local government elections and national elections because ANC voters aren't as motivated as opposition voters to go to the ballot box for local government elections. They're more voted, motivated at general elections. So that's what that? we put. I think it's just because it's you know more more at stake and people aren't as, uh, uh, um, you know, they're not, uh, uh, they don't see municipal elections as being as important as national elections. But uh, the, I think uh, also that's something that opposition parties need to look at. The first step for an ANC voter to vote for somebody else is abstaining from voting for ANC. And the next step is voting for an opposition party. So I think that's kind of people that uh, opposition parties need to look at and also people who don't vote in the first place. But yeah, so overall, I mean, uh, I don't think that opposition parties would have numbers, even if we had to include the EFF as a kind of a broad ANC, anti-ANC front to really be, uh, to govern. I think we'll, most likely we'll probably see the ANC governing in a, as a minority government, but only a very slight minority, as I said, just be a couple of percentage points under 50%. Or just about fifty percent, or governing in coalition with a couple of small parties, you know. And also, I mentioned the Freedom Front Plus could possibly go along with the ANC. Even don't count out something like the Party of Freedom Party, who they seem quite schizophrenic on who they often go into coalition with. They been they've governed with the ANC before. Uh, they seem to be kind of on the fence about who they're going to support in Johannesburg, and they've been governing with the EFF in uh, KwaZulu Natal. So even a party like that could, you know, I wouldn't count them out. I wouldn't say that they are solid a member of any kind of anti anti front. So I mean, they're a probable member, uh, but I mean, I wouldn't say they're a definite member. Thanks for watching. Let's hand over to you, our audience. Do you think coalitions are a viable alternative to the dominance of the ANC? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed this analysis. You might want to check out the full-length interview with Marius Ruert. That's linked over here. You can also subscribe to my other channel. That's linked over here. My name is David Ansara. Until next time, take care.